Joining me now is Miranda Devine, New York Post columnist, Fox News contributor, author of Laptop from Hell, keeps getting more hellish, and Mike Davis, founder and president of the Internet Accountability Project. Miranda, now, so a lot of people watching might kind of remember this Baker character, but why is he important? And it's just, come on, this is just a coincidence, right? I mean, so he goes to Twitter's, <laughs> Twitter's employment to the top, top executive. Well, James Baker was a good friend and ally of, uh, of course, James Comey. Uh, it was Baker, as the top lawyer at the FBI, who wrote the memo that exonerate, pre-exonerated, really, Hillary Clinton. Um, he was behind all the Russia collusion hoaxes to try and uh, get rid of Donald Trump. And uh, in the end, in 2018, Christopher Wray basically threw him out of that general counsel role and he shortly afterwards resigned. And um, he showed up at Twitter, strangely enough, just five months before the 2020 election. And uh, he was, uh, of course, right in the centre of the decision to censor the New York Post. He, of course, you won't be surprised to know, was on the side of censorship uh, to err on the side of caution. Well, they also um, turned out, Mike, to the FBI warned Twitter during these weekly meetings before the 2020 election to expect hack and leak operations by state actors involving Hunter and likely in October, according to that sworn uh, declaration by Twitter's former head of uh, site integrity, Yoel Roth. How is that important? Well, it's amazing that we have these big tech platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Google, colluding with the FBI, with the government to censor, silence, deplatform conservatives and others with whom they disagree, including the oldest newspaper in America, the New York Post. And it was this Jim Baker who just happens to be the Forrest Gump of all these scandals. He was the guy behind the Russian collusion hoax with Sussman. And then he shows up at Twitter and he's, he's the guy pushing the censorship of the, of the New York Post. And by the way, Miranda, this kind of, he calls himself, I guess, a former Republican now, this guy, Matt Dowd. He's saying that this was all kind of a good thing for that Twitter did this. Watch this. What amazes me is Elon Musk might have spent a little more time reading the First Amendment and what it said, because his immediate thing was this was a violation of the First Amendment when, as far as I can tell, no government authority told Twitter not to do something. It was amazing to me that all of these sort of Fox News or whoever else jumped on this without ever fully understanding that it was basically meaningless what happened. And that actually turned out to be a good thing. Miranda. Well, I guess maybe he doesn't understand that if the FBI goes to Twitter and instructs them or persuades them to pre-bunk a New York Post story, to pre-censor it, then that is a violation of the First Amendment. Um, I, I do agree in one sense that Elon Musk... Uh, did not release anything that was really um, useful when it comes to the FBI's intervention. And I wonder if that is because James Baker is still there and I assume that uh, Elon Musk had to get his release of various documents cleared by Twitter's lawyers uh, before they went to Matt Taibbi. So maybe uh, Twitter's lawyers only allowed one little email from James Baker yeah. that had all the identifying, the date, the time, all shorn from it, which was very interesting. Uh, and the yeah. other thing about James Baker that we need to remember is that he also, between the FBI and Twitter, went to work for the Lawfare blog, which is, um, you know, attached to the Brookings Institution, where a number of the 51 former Intel operatives who signed that dirty letter, that dishonest letter saying that our story and Hunter Biden's laptop was a Russian disinformation operation. So he's connected to them as well. He is, uh, Jonathan Turley called him the Kevin Bacon of Russian collusion. <laughs> Six degrees of separation of James Baker. All right. Yeah. Um, they tried to kind of deflect from the Twitter revelations. And I think Miranda's right. They need the raw data to come out. But they're doing it by saying, well, Trump is the guy who's anti-Constitution. And one of the MSNBC hosts this morning had a message for Republicans. Watch. Here's the thing, like, for Republicans, like, let's, let's get a, let, let's spell it out for you. Why don't you write this down, okay? Um, 
To terminate the Constitution is to terminate America. Donald Trump is wrong, and I can no longer support him at all as a presidential candidate, as an American citizen. That was the tamest of what she said. But uh, what about that? Like, Trump comes out and says, you know, puts, looks like he was kind of doing it in jest, but saying, well, they can, you know, install me or have a new election. Was that, was that subverting the Constitution? <laughs> I, I, I'm not even following what her argument is here. I mean, I think what we've seen when we have the FBI working with big tech to censor Americans, that is about as against the Constitution as you can get. It's a clear First Amendment violation. So I'm just not even understanding where she's going. Well, Miranda, I always find it rich when the Democrats are saying, we care about the Constitution when <laughs> they want to invent <laughs> rights in the Constitution that don't exist. They want to eviscerate the Second Amendment. The First Amendment, as Mike says, means really nothing unless their views are the ones that are always preeminent. So suddenly, like, well, you're against the Constitution. Like, you think all those guys who wrote it are racist, okay? That's what they think. Miranda, close it. Look, what the Democrats are best at is projecting. They accuse you of the crimes that they commit themselves. So if you want to know what the Democrats are up to, just look at what they're accusing the Republicans <laughs> of doing. That's a good one. Miranda and Mike, great to see you both. We spent Friday night together, too. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.